China's mighty dragon J-20 stealth fighter jet aims to outmatch the American F-35 and F-22 fighters. It wants to dominate the skies over the South China Sea and ensure air superiority in the event of a war with the United States. But is it really all that great? Or is it just a cheap AliExpress knockoff version? Are any of the J-20's capabilities really unique, or did China just tactically acquire all of them? We'll also speculate on whether or not American radar systems detect this new Chinese fighter jet, and how is the J-20 optimized for anti-access area denial, which is China's main strategy and tactic for dominating the South China Sea. The J-20 is produced by Qingdong Aircraft Industry Group, located in Qingdong, Sichuan Province, China. Founded in 1990, the company specializes in producing China's fighter aircraft and is part of the larger Aviation Industry Corporation of China, AVIC. It's known that China struggles with mass-producing assets that require high-quality production. However, after seeing new J-20 variants up close during the Juha 2020 air show, Western analysts credit Chinese production of the J-20 with coming a long way in manufacturing tolerance and quality control. And this is something I want to note up front, because whenever I talk about China stealing or tactically acquiring technology, it's still nothing short of impressive that they were able to mass produce the technology at scale. They still had to innovate and problem solve and build a massive industrial base to create these aircraft. With 200 and growing, the J-20 has already surpassed the fleet of America's 185 F-22s, which finished production back in 2011, the same year as the birth of the J-20. But before we get into that, this is the one ring to rule them all. Okay, so it doesn't actually make you invisible, but the Ridge Men's Tungsten Wedding Band Ring does have an inner convex shape that's designed for your day in and day out activities. I know finding a wedding band ring for guys can be tough because a lot of them are extremely uncomfortable or unstylish. The Ridge designed a dual layer band that has a no pinch grip design. Whether you lose your ring or drop 20 pounds, the Ridge offers two free exchanges. It includes a travel case and dual band silicone rings for comfort. The silicone rings are ideal for the kind of guys who want to wear a ring without the risk of losing something valuable. Whether you're married or not, rings make for a stylish flair, allowing you to add a crest or emblem. There are a variety of premium materials to choose from, including carbon fiber, tungsten carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. The Ridge has over 50,000 five-star reviews and over 3 million customers. You can go to ridge.com slash task and purpose and use code task and purpose to get 10% off your order. Again, that's ridge.com slash task and purpose, code task and purpose for 10% off your order. The speed of this growth is staggering. Some watchdogs in 2021 did not forecast China surpassing F-22 numbers until 2027. But the origins of this aircraft's technology aside, the J-20 is the largest fifth generation aircraft of all time. At 21.2 meters or 69 feet 7 inches long, it's 4.69 meter or, or 15 feet 5 inches high and has a 73 square meter or 790 square foot wingspan. The aircraft is said to have a range of 3,400 miles, practically twice the range of both the F-35 and F-22. Now we might want to take some of those numbers with a bit of skepticism because China's intelligence agency still hasn't returned my emails requesting them to divulge these specifications for certain. However, if we take them at face value, then this increased range allows the J-20 to penetrate deep into the second island chain, giving it greater access to targets in the South China Sea. Most of the US bases surrounding China are contained within a 1,000 mile radius. In a conventional war, these bases will need to be supplied to give US combat power to defend and support Taiwan in a conflict. Notice how we mentioned that the US has bases surrounding China. From China's perspective, if we place ourselves in their shoes, then you could see how they might want something like the J-20 to deny the US access to airspace near their coast. The J-20, with its stealth fighter capabilities, has the capability to fly beyond the US bases and choke off their support system or strike at command and control nodes behind the first line of US defense. The Spartley Islands are China's island aircraft carriers. Purely military in nature, these forward-positioned air and naval bases will likely be early targets during a conflict. 
The longer range of the J-20 allows it to base deep inside mainland China, offering opportunity for greater protection via China's integrated air defense systems. And all of this would make sense except for one dang thing. The J-20 is the only fighter aircraft that doesn't come with a gun. Because the aircraft lacks a cannon, it's surmised that the fighter isn't designed to engage in close-up dogfights, but instead identify and engage targets at long to mid-range. With its current model, China forecasts a battle space where air-to-air -air engagements are done at longer distances, and they have confidence that pilots can rely on sensor-driven missiles to hit a target without being jammed or deceived. The United States doesn't seem to be on the same page here, with both of its fifth-generation fighters featuring cannons for close-up engagements. Personally, I think Chinese pilots just don't want to get the middle finger from Tom Cruise when they're inverted. Instead of a cannon, the Mighty Dragon boasts three internal weapons bays and eight hardpoints, four on each wing. A large bay underneath holds four PL-15 long-range missiles, and two smaller bays on either side hold one PL-10 heat-seeking air-to-air missile each. According to reports, the J-20's long-range missiles, the PL-15, has a range over 200 kilometers and can reach speeds up to Mach 4, outclassing its U.S. counterparts, the AIM-120, which is believed to have a 160-kilometer max range. The PL-10 is closer to the U.S. short-to-mid-range Sidewinder missile, and the J-20 has a unique way of deploying it. Instead of using some variation of catapult to launch the missile from the bay, and then using high-tech mumbo-jumbo to have the plane tell the missiles where to go, the J-20 uses rotating rails that hold the missile in place outside the aircraft until it can lock onto its target. This innovation solves several problems, first keeping the missile attached to the plane until a lock-on circumvents the need for the plane to communicate to the missile after launch, simplifying this kill chain, second, this allows the J-20 to close the weapons bay doors with the missile outside, increasing aerodynamics in a dogfight and minimizing its radar signature. This unique design was covered in detail by the Warzone of the Drive.com. A downed American F-117 Nighthawk likely helped contribute to the J-20's radar absorbing technology after they investigated the wreckage. Documents released from the infamous NSA leaker Edward Snowden showed that China hacked U.S. contractor secret files on the F-35 way back in 2007. In 2014, Su Bin, a Chinese multi-millionaire, was arrested and pleaded guilty in Canada for stealing secrets from the F-35 and F-22 program for China. The Diplomat reported J-20 photos in 2018 revealed a sensor system that appeared to be identical to Lockheed Martin's electro-optical targeting system on the front of the F-35 Lightning II. There are even further reports of Chinese spies hacking into Australian contractors for F-35 secrets in 2017. But when you get right down to it, the J-20 most closely resembles the Russian MiG-144. The MiG-1.44 was a contestant for Russia's fifth-generation aircraft, but eventually beaten out by the Su-57, Russia's current fifth-generation stealth fighter. The MiG-1.44 features the same unique canard design that is present in the J-20. In 2011, an investigation from Reuters appears to confirm that the company that produces the MiG, McCoyan, assisted China with the J-20 development. To compensate, China has integrated what's called a pulse production line into their manufacturing process. Zhu Chaming, a military science researcher in Beijing at their think tank, said because of this production method, the PLA has been able to step up its warplane replacement progress in recent years. But that just sounds like buzzword speak. What does pulse production line really mean? A pulsating production line aims to never stop moving, which is unusual before now in aircraft manufacturing. The advantage is reduced inventory, which is great because keeping inventory on hand is basically the same thing as keeping cash wasted in limbo. However, the disadvantage is that pulse production must be very reliable, so no part of the stage of the line can fail at any point. This is key because if there is a supply chain problem, which as we've seen can happen in the United States, that means your pulse production line is screwed. As far as cost, the current J-20 is estimated to cost around 110 million USD. This is far more than all F-35 variants that cost between 60 and 90 million USD, but less than the F-22 Raptor, 
with a $185 million price tag. Of course, it's difficult to really compare these numbers one to one because of the way China accounts for their aircraft costs might be very different than the way the United States does. For instance, we don't know if they're including research and development costs there. There's also purchasing power parity to account for, electronics and sensors. The sensors and avionics aboard the J-20 are a hotly debated topic. There are claims that this has sensors and electronic systems that possibly outmatch those on the United States. Baha, I scoff. Meanwhile, US officials remain skeptical and are not quote unquote losing sleep over the J-20's capabilities. The J-20 reportedly features a full glass touchscreen LCD cockpit with an integrated helmet mounted display that mimics US fifth generation designs. Chinese pilots claim to have the ability to use this in a similar fashion to the F-35 pilots where they can see, target, and fire on enemy aircraft in 360 degrees around their aircraft simply by looking in the direction of the bandit. This is also known as firing missiles at high off boreside angle. The J-20 seats a Type 1475 active electronically scanned array radar in its nose. This is a similar system to those carried by other fifth generation fighters, which has both a high resistance to jamming as well as a low probability of intercept. Even though, yes, specific details about the J-20's data link system remain classified, it is widely known that the aircraft incorporates data link technology to facilitate seamless communication and data exchange with other friendly platforms. The data link enables real-time sharing of critical information, such as mission updates, target data, and situational awareness among ground control stations and other aircraft in the network. The capability empowers the J-20 to operate as a part of this coordinated network-centric force where information can be rapidly disseminated, improving overall operational effectiveness. By leveraging its data link system, the J-20 can enhance its battlefield awareness, optimize mission coordination, and maximize its combat capabilities. We know this is something that the Chinese government is placing a major priority on. They're focusing specifically on battle management networks for their air force, and they believe this is gonna be a major factor of whoever wins the future war. This is by far the most boring aspect of air combat that you could ever hope to talk about. There's absolutely nothing sexy about a battle management system. It's like trying to dress a spreadsheet up and make it look pretty. And yet the fact remains, this is a really important aspect to future warfare. Can your spreadsheet AI software manage assets faster and better than your opponent? Software wars. So bear with me here because I promise you these concepts are key to understanding new and future air warfare. Sensor fusion on the J-20 refers to the integration and processing of data from multiple sensors on board the aircraft to provide a comprehensive and accurate picture of the battle and its environment. The sensors in question here are your radar systems, your infrared cameras, which gather information about the surrounding airspace and ground targets. Then sensor fusion algorithms analyze and combine that data from these different sensors. This gives the pilot the ability to track and prioritize targets and potential threats. Just think of it like Alexa on steroids. It's constantly listening to you and telling you answers that you need to know about the enemy instantly. But what good is all of that if the enemy can spot you? So can American radar systems detect China's stealth fighter? This is a difficult question to answer without access to both countries' classified systems. And last time I checked, I'm just a dude on YouTube with no inside information. But when F-35s and J-20s met in a non-tactical rendezvous over the South China Sea, General Kenneth Wisbach remarked, we noticed they're flying it pretty well. We recently had, I wouldn't call it an engagement, where we got relatively close to the J-20s along with our F-35s in the East China Sea and were relatively impressed with the command and control associated with the J-20. If we take the general at his word and we don't assume any ulterior motives, then this is a pretty impressive aircraft. We could read into it, be paranoid, and think that maybe the military is trying to exaggerate China's abilities in some kind of alarmist way to generate more funding. Personally, I I'm gonna just believe what the experts have to say here. Since the J-20 is the largest of all fifth generation aircraft, it has the biggest radar cross section, which means it might be easier to detect than other stealth aircraft with smaller RCSs. Another point to consider is the extent to which stealth technology incorporated in the J-20 was obtained from the United States. 
it's important to acknowledge that U.S. engineers would possess significant knowledge about any potentially stolen technology and be aware of its vulnerabilities. This line of reasoning also applies to China's decision to base the design of their fighter jet on the Russian MiG. The final consideration centers on the true meaning of a stealth aircraft. Making an aircraft with stealth capabilities doesn't make it invisible. Adding up many small features like radar absorbing coating or lowering the RCS simply make the aircraft harder and harder to see, especially at further distances. For China to truly operate under the radar, it's critical that they understand where US sensors are and what gaps exist in defenses in order to exploit them. Just because the J-20 has not deployed in combat doesn't mean that this is not already impacting China's relations with its neighbors. China for decades has played the role of peaceful, economically driven government, becoming one of only three nations to possess a domestically produced fifth generation fighter is changing the way nations view China, particularly China's neighbors. The military modernization is challenging the status quo and forcing other nations to think more seriously about their national defense. This is leading some to increase military spending to forge closer ties with the United States in response. So when you look at India, for example, when long-standing border disputes flared up between India and China in 2022, Chinese authorities deployed J-20s to the border as a show of force. India previously participated in a fifth generation fighter project with Russia, but after leaving the project, India relies on their Su-30 as its main fighter aircraft, with no stealth fighters in their inventory. Actions like this with the J-20 are not without consequences, and we could see India continue to lean towards Western security pacts in hopes to join with the already 17 nation conglomerate of the F-35 program. In January 2023, Chinese pilots claimed to have flown the J-20 over Taiwan without triggering any air defense system alerts. Whether this is true or a stunt to drum up enthusiasm for China's first combat group to be fully equipped with J-20s, it's yet to be determined. But a few months after this report, in April, Taiwan finalized a $420 million deal with the United States to improve and maintain its fighter aircraft on the island. The J-20 is reported to have a maximum speed of Mach 2, but does not yet have the capability to super cruise, or in other words, go supersonic without the use of its afterburners. This is a setback in the aircraft's capabilities because using afterburners is like going full cyclic on an aircraft's fuel supply. However, planned upgrades to the J-20 powertrain are expected to give it this ability, as well as the ability to reach up to Mach 2.5 in future variants. The J-20 has a reported max altitude of 66,000 feet, 1,000 feet higher than the F-22, and 16,000 feet higher than the F-35. Whether this is 100% true or not, either way, this thing can fly insanely high. Putting this into an average infantryman's perspective, large civilian passenger jets fly at maximum altitudes of only 43,000 feet. This altitude advantage gives the J-20 sensors further reach, allowing it to hit targets further away or communicate and coordinate strikes with other platforms over long distances. Because of the J-20's longer range and max higher altitude, some are calling the aircraft a sniper stealth fighter. The engine is one of the most noticeable drawbacks of the J-20 and appears to be what China is struggling with the most. Originally, the J-20 was forced to use Russian-made Saturn AL-31 engines. These engines were foreign imported, did not possess high levels of stealth characteristics, and could not allow the aircraft to fully reach its potential. Just what my dad always said. Kind of like putting an old lawnmower engine into a Kawasaki Ninja. Eventually, China began producing and equipping its J-20s with domestically made WS-10 engines originally designed for earlier fighter models. Its latest version, the WS-10C features serrated nozzles to help minimize its radar signature. The J-20 has often been described as a love child between America's F-22 and Russia's MiG-144. Both Russia and the US have accused China of stealing technology and designs when it comes to the J-20. Finally, something the United States and Russia can potentially bond over. China, please stop stealing our military technology. Of course, China has a history of doing this, and really, let's be honest, they'd be stupid not to. It's like my squad leader used to always say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. 
In programs like this shrouded in all kinds of secrecy and mystery, perhaps the one certain source of leverage that the United States has over China's J-20 is the international aspect of the F-35 program. Japan, South Korea, Australia, and even Singapore are all buyers in the F-35 program, meaning that in a war between the US and China, the US may be able to leverage regional powers with equal stealth fighter capability against China. This leverage would be of course dependent on political cooperation as much as military joint operations. So what are your thoughts on the J-20? Is this fifth generation fire jet China's great leap forward in military aviation? How do you see China as integrating this platform into their overall military strategy? I wanna know your thoughts. Be sure to share them in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm Chris Cappy, your average infantryman. Thank you for watching.